All right, welcome everyone. This is Our Travel Experiences. I'm your host, Kyle Rasmussen. And today I have with me Callie from the Travel Shifters. Callie, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. I'm I'm really excited to hear uh, to hear your story. I know I've been looking through your your website and your Instagram a little bit. And so I'm really excited to learn about career or long term type travel and your experiences with that. So it should be fun. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about it. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I think it's best. Uh, why don't you start uh, with telling the listeners how you got to this point? Sure. So we'll have to take it back a little ways to <laughs> when, no, <laughs> when I was born. But my upbringing was like very typical. And I think kind of embrace a travel lifestyle feel that way that like you sort of have this one track that you're expected to like get good grades and go to college and get a good job and all that. And that's what I did. And I studied chemical engineering and I got a job and long story short, my job was super stressful and it got to a point where I was completely burned out. And all I wanted to do was live my life and not live to be working all the time. So one thing I did appreciate from the work life was vacation time. And in that time, I was able to travel a little bit, but each time I would go and come back to work, I wanted more. And so mm -hmm. I ultimately made this decision to quit my job in order to travel the world. And so that's what I ended up doing in 2015, which just sort of changed my whole life. I had the intention of going for about one year it turned into more than two years and ultimately it was fantastic and we can focus on that but something i will just throw in there is that i ended up going back into the workforce afterwards and it's like a great part of this story because i was able to switch industries completely after that mm -hmm. what what kind of industry did you go back into so I went from like working in oil and gas as an engineer. And then when I came back, I actually received three job offers, none of them related to engineering. And the job I accepted was as an operations manager for a travel company that focused on the educational aspects of travel. So it was very, oh, very cool. Nice. So in, uh, I mean, kind of describe what it was like where you're at this point where you're like, I need to quit my job and go travel the world. Sure. So <laughs> there were some tears in the bathroom. There was just <laughs> this overwhelming feeling of dread every single day. So working in oil and gas, it's a 24-7 business every single day of the year. Some weeks I would be working like over 100 hours, which is insane to oh, even geez. think about. Um, so it just got to this point where I'm like, I physically don't think I can keep doing this. I don't actually see another position within the company that I would be happy doing. And mm -hmm. what ended up happening was while I was having all of these thoughts, I did get promoted <laughs> to a role <laughs> that was less demanding. I wasn't going to have to work all of those hours. And instead of feeling like happy and relieved, I was crying and it wasn't tears of joy or anything like that. It was just like, I don't want to be here at all. And so that was very telling for me, but I gave it the old college try and accepted the promotion just to try it out, see if I had any different feelings about it. And I did not. So just about three months after receiving that promotion, I pulled the trigger, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So was there any planning involved uh, as you decided to go travel the world? Did you have any sort of plans or just like, I'm going to pick a spot and we'll start there? Um, both. So it's funny, like if they actually checked my computer at work, they would have known I was planning something because <laughs> when I did receive that less demanding job, I had more time to do research about travel. So leading up to the decision. And so the time I left was around June. So in January, I started like having these ideas and I would spend any time I did have reading like blog posts and stuff like that. And it started getting really exciting. I had ideas in my head, things I would want to do. And then as I started getting closer, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to do it. What I ended up doing to make sure that I actually went through with the decision was I booked a trip through Eastern and Southern Africa, an overland trip. It was like seven weeks long. 
and I, I booked it before I even quit my job. So I had to quit because it was leaving in July. <laughs> so that is like what started me on this journey. But I also had this grandiose idea that I needed to start this one year on January 1st, which was a little problematic considering it was June when I was leaving. So I, the way it all panned out was that like I ended up quitting my job in June. I took a few weeks to pack up my apartment. So I was working in Texas. My family's in Massachusetts. I decided to take whatever fit in my car and move it back to Massachusetts, sell everything else. So that brings us to like July. Then I went traveling in Africa for about two months. And then by the time I came back, I had some weddings and the holidays and stuff. So then I was able to take off again on January 1st with a really, ugh, I had a plan. I had a list of everywhere I would want to go. And the problem with this is that I just, I had this like mentality that I wanted to go everywhere. And the reason this is so problematic is because, well, it's impossible. And so you travel with this scarcity mindset and you're going so fast and not enjoying it. And mm -hmm. not only that, my plans were like on the, the air on the side of illogical. Like it was not, <laughs> I was like flying back and forth across the globe. Oh, I would have done it differently knowing what I know now, but it was also a lesson I needed to learn at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many, uh, how many countries did you end up visiting during that time? Over those two years, I don't have an exact figure, but I think it was somewhere like 35 to 45 or something like that okay. over two years. And so like I saw a lot of Europe, so you can travel Europe pretty easily. And then mm -hmm. towards the tail end of the two plus years, I slowed it down a lot. I ended up spending like two months in Colombia and that's when I finally, it clicked for me. I'm like, oh, this is what it needs to be like moving forward in my travels. <laughs> what, so I'm curious, in, uh, like in Colombia for two months, what were you doing? Were you, were you working at all or were you just traveling around? So I was in one city in Medellin and okay. I had an apartment. I decided to take Spanish classes to learn Spanish once and for all. Um, I was teaching English online a little bit. And that was like, that was it. I'm like, I want to try having a routine, a schedule. I joined a gym. I had friends. It was nice. And it just felt really like a good way to travel and to have that base, to see a new city. And that, yeah, it was transformational for me. <laughs> so now you know, now after having those experiences, is that the way you typically travel? Yes. So it's funny to reflect on how I used to travel and knowing how I travel now. And like, if you told me I have to go somewhere for one month, I'm like, oh, that's not enough. It really just changes the way you see the world and how you experience things. So it's a really interesting switch, I guess. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I feel like, you know, if you if you are there longer, you're, you're going to make those friends and those connections and have a little a little deeper tied to the to the place, I would guess. Exactly. And so some of the experiences I have had in like my slower travels, I'm like, wow, imagine if I had slowed down in some of these other places. So, I mean, you can never fully experience a place, but there are a number mm -hmm. of places I would love to go back to and just explore a bit deeper. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so then you you came back, uh, you went back into the workforce. Uh, and then what happened from there? Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I worked and the job allowed me to travel in the US and Canada mostly, which was really cool and was a, really helped with the transition back into the real world. And the way I describe it is like the job was great until it wasn't. There are things, I don't know, I decided I needed a change. And in a minor lapse in judgment, a slight identity crisis, if you will, I took another job back in the world of engineering. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned identity crisis because a lot of times, like people who are tend to be on the high achieving side, like you really tie yourself to your job and what you can do. And I, that's what happened to me. And I couldn't see it at the time. And so I went back into the world of engineering 
different company, different industry, different job, but the toxicity felt very similar and very reminiscent. And I ended up quitting after five weeks because I realized I made a mistake. And because I made a mistake, I didn't feel comfortable making any like huge decisions with about my career at that time. So I decided to travel again. Mm -hmm. so. And then did you travel full time after that or was it more split yeah. up? So I ended up buying a one way ticket to Indonesia. And it was around this time I started dabbling in like remote work. So I was just going to go for career break round two. And before I left, my friend is like, oh, like my friend is hiring contractors for this type of job. You should talk to him. And so I did. And I ended up getting a job that was really flexible that I could do pretty much whenever I wanted, as long as I committed at least 10 to 20 hours per week. And it covered my travel expenses in Indonesia. And so I traveled slowly. I went to Indonesia for the full 30 days that I was allowed to be there. I needed to switch countries in order to reset that. Mm -hmm. I ended up going back to Indonesia. Um, and then I went on like a little adventure through the Middle East. And so it was about four months of travel at that time. Okay. Wow. Um, so then uh, what happened at that point? So at that point, I actually received a call from that travel education company offering me a con like a four month contract job in San Diego, California. If okay. I wanted it. And so I said, sure. <laughs> and so I went to California for to work this contract for four months. And it just so happened to coincide with the onset of COVID. Oh, no. <laughs> and it's funny because I was working at a school for international students. So I had over 800 students from all around the world living on campus. And then this global pandemic begins. And so all hell broke loose basically at that point. <laughs> oh gosh. So did you, uh, were you able to finish out the contract or how? Yes. So I stayed. Many of the students did not stay. They went home to their countries as like all the presidents were calling people home. But we ended up having about 150 students stay. So I was still needed. I was in charge of the school. And so I guess I was technically an essential worker. I went to school every day. And it was kind of a really cool experience because I got to know those students who were still there and stuck around and at a, on a level that I wouldn't have been able to get to know over 800 students. So mm -hmm. it was a great experience and I enjoyed it. And I kind of, it worked out the way that it was supposed to, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> So how did, uh, I mean, I know we're getting to that point in the story, but how did COVID kind of affect your, your travels? Yeah, so it's funny, like COVID was like starting to become like talked about when I was coming home. So this was like February 2020. I was flying home from Jordan and like, I remember hearing things. And so I'm like, oh, like I never thought it would be a thing. I'm like, it doesn't yeah. really matter. I'm coming home to the U.S whatever but then like being in California and experiencing lockdown and then my contract ending in June and I flew back to Massachusetts and like I'm like I don't know if I want to be on a plane like all of these things factor into it but I don't know it just got to this point where I'm like I don't know what to do like I don't feel comfortable traveling the world freely like I used to I just don't think it's right it doesn't feel safe and like I don't want to impact anyone like by being someone who is traveling around from place to place to place with this very contagious thing. Yeah. So I ended up staying put in the Boston area for a couple of months and then felt really antsy and decided to go to Mexico, but like not to travel per se, but to kind of just take time and space to myself to figure out what was next. Mm -hmm. And what, that's what I did. <laughs> was it tough to move to Mexico, especially during COVID? So Mexico never had any restrictions in terms of like entering the country. So in that respect, it was very easy. 
um, for me, like on an ethical level, I'm like, is this the right thing to be doing? It's something I asked myself and like, it, they didn't require COVID tests or anything like that, but I still tested myself before I went and all of that. And then I was just under the school of thought that I'm like, I'm not here to like, it's going to be different. I'm not here traveling like I normally would. This is actually me just kind of reflecting inward alone in a different place. And so it wasn't that difficult. I was able to find an apartment on that was pretty affordable. I like followed all the local rules and regulations. I spent a ton of time by myself and it was good. So it wasn't that difficult, but it definitely felt weird because that was my first time out of the country since COVID had started. And it, mm -hmm. it's so different. It was not like my previous travels. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I feel like travel's gotten a little bit, a little bit different now since COVID. Definitely. And like, it does finally start to feel like things are coming back to like the pre COVID times, but mm -hmm. it was a little precarious because you don't want to make anyone uncomfortable with your presence and just, yeah. it was an interesting time because I came to realize like a lot of travel has to do with the people you meet and the connections you make. And here I am kind of, I'm doing air quotes traveling, but I don't want to meet any people. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Like what am I doing? <laughs> That's funny. Um, so now at this point, uh, is this when the, when the travel shifters, business started yes exactly it was born in mexico and I, i'm like at the tail end of my contract in san diego i'm like i need to do something different like what am i going to do i was sort of applying for some jobs i started listening to like business podcasts and that's when i finally realized that i'm like oh you don't have to have like this massive shark tank idea in order to start a business you can just do something smaller scale. You can help people with stuff that you already know how to do. And so I finally felt confident. I'm like, I can do it now. I No sense waiting. Because it had always been something that I would do one day. But when you say one day, everyone knows that means never. It just doesn't yep. come to fruition unless you make a decision. And mm -hmm. so I decided that I would start a business, but I didn't know what it was going to be. And I didn't know what it would look like. And I wanted it to be travel related, but it didn't make sense to me to make something travel related during COVID. And so it took a lot of time and like being alone and having that time to reflect, to really kind of morph it and form it into what it is today. Wow. Wow. So now it's been what, about two years since that started? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes, it has been. <laughs> and it's taken some twists and turns. And but now like my business really does focus on like the possibilities of travel, travel possibilities is the name of my podcast. And focusing on like the two channels of bringing more travel into your life, primarily remote work and career breaks, both of which I have extensive experience with. Yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, just from the, the quick click that I originally uh, did on your uh, on your link tree, I was like, oh my gosh, there's so many opportunities and possibilities out here. You yeah. you got it all right there in an easy to find place. <laughs> yes, thank you, and it's like very cool. I mean, podcasts are such a cool way to connect with people with interesting backgrounds and stories, mm -hmm. and so it's. Well, it's awesome, but also, I don't know, maybe it's just my personality. I'm like, people tell me the stories and the ways that they've traveled and all the things that they've done. And I want to do like all of it, but it just, it's not that feasible to do all yeah. of the possibilities. So yeah. <laughs> that's a separate problem. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I feel that same, same struggle. It's like, oh, there's so many cool things you can do and ways to do it. And you just can't do it all. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you got to make some decisions. Yeah. Um, what was it like? Uh, I mean, your, how long has your podcast been going for? Mm -hmm. It's just over a year old now. Okay. What, yep. what's it been like doing that? Oh, it's been really great. And so like a podcast has always been something on my mind. It's just, I feel like I've always been like shy to speak and things like that. So I'm like, well, wouldn't that be cool if I did something to challenge myself and whatnot? Mm -hmm. And so I finally, again, made the decision to do it. 
And I also decided that I wanted to break it up in seasons so that I don't have to perpetually be putting out episodes every single week or whatever. And so it's been nice that I can focus on a season, get the episodes out, take a break in between. And it's like, to me, it's really exhilarating and rejuvenating having conversations with interesting people that I can relate to so well, because we have a shared experience and that love of travel. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. Um, and, and smart idea to not uh, have to do one every week. I know sometimes that's a struggle for me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> at this point, but <laughs> uh, so with uh, which with each season it looks like each one focuses on a different topic is that right exactly yes okay so what was uh what's the most recent season what's that been about so my current season is about travel jobs and so that okay. falls into the category of jobs that either allow you to travel a job that you tra- like got relocated for it mm-hmm. all sort of falls under that umbrella seasonal jobs things like that Okay. What, like, what kind of people have you talked to or conversations have you had with that? Yes. So, so far I've had episodes come out, a professional basketball player in Europe, um, working on a yacht, working on cruise ships and like working in Disney Paris. Um, The most recent episode is with a girl who did a work exchange in Northern Sweden, Sweden as a dog sledding guide. Oh, so, what? That's awesome. Right? <laughs> I know. It, it's like a really cool story because like she doesn't have a background in dog sledding. She's an engineer. So it's like it's really just there are opportunities and there are possibilities if you want it. They are there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I know. I, I was honestly overwhelmed. Like there's so many possibilities. Uh, and like I said, all, all of those resources are there on your on your link tree and your website. Um, but I just, I didn't even realize that there was so many opportunities out there. Right. And like part of it for me is that, I mean, I'm in my thirties now. I would have loved to have known this earlier. (laughs) I could have saved a lot of time and effort, but Hey, like sometimes you need to learn the lessons, but if you don't have to, if you can learn it from someone else, then all the better. Yep, exactly. (laughs) Um, So talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what it's been like doing these career breaks, what advice would you have for people that are looking to do that? Yes. So with career breaks, it's, if you are considering it at all, I will say that feeling's not going to go away. So really the only solution is to be like, I'm going to do it. And in order to make sure that's a reality, you have to decide. You can't just be like, I would like to do that someday. Again, it's like making the decision and going for it. And I also will just say it is so much more possible than you might realize because a lot of people have fears and it's so normal. And these beliefs hold you back for all the reasons why you can't do it. But what if we looked at the reasons why you could do it? I love that. And so that's like my number one piece of advice. And then like just on a logistics level, um, (laughs) I like to suggest to people to sort of come up with a semblance of a plan. Like I really do think spontaneity and travel is super important and that's where the magic happens but so you're not like me flying back and forth across the globe pick a region to start and like figure out where you want to go in that region before you move on to another region so that is another pro tip from someone who's done it wrong (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah I mean the the flights are usually one of the most expensive parts so I would assume if you can limit that probably going to be helpful Absolutely. And like, I just went like ham with some points and miles that I had. And I'm like, yeah, I'll just take this 48 hour flight with two massively long layovers the wrong way across the globe, because it's essentially free. But there are better ways. (laughs) Yeah. um, You know, without getting too much into it, what, uh, what are some like major tips that you would have for people looking to do that? In terms of planning? Yeah, yeah, planning planning out, uh, you know, that longer term type of travel. Sure. So but first, I always say, ask yourself why you want to be doing it. And like, but like, on a deeper level, not just like, I want to see the world. Like, why do you want to see the world? And this is really important, because if you do go on this trip, 
you're going to get to points where it feels really difficult. You're going to feel tired. You might feel that burnout. You're going to experience the same emotions you experience in your day-to-day -day life abroad because when you go on vacation, it is different than traveling long-term. Vacation, it's more realistic to expect that things are going to be great every single day. And then we take that expectation to long-term travel and it's just not reality because mm -hmm. it's your life now. Long-term travel is just normal life in different places. So you're going to need to have a really strong why as to why you're doing this because your people back home can't really relate either. It's not it, when you call and say like, I'm really sad or I'm burnt out and they're like, but you should be so happy because you're traveling the world. It's hard to get people who understand where you're coming from in that. And so <laughs> start with why you really want to do it and have that ready what, as you go through the process of like getting yourself set up to make this a reality. Also yeah. consider like what's really important to you. Um, do you want to see the world like on a budget? Are there certain places that you really want to go to? Kind of prioritize what is important to you so that you can plan it the best possible way. Mm -hmm. And I always say like, if you are going to make this a reality, it should be exactly the way you want. So if it costs, like it costs money to travel, it does. And there's no, there are ways to do it for less, but ultimately like being from the United States, having an education and a job i'm in like for me i'm in a very fortunate position to know that i can earn more money if i need to and i'm lucky and so if i need to do things to save more money to make this the way that i want it and then knowing that i can always come back and work again like mm -hmm. what a privilege and i am going to take advantage of that privilege so keep that in mind as well mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, now, like planning, planning out these longer trips, that's, that's something that you actually help people with, right? Yes. Okay. Well, tell me a little bit about that side of the business. So I do have a program basically called Career Break Bootcamp, and it takes you through all of this, like the whole mindset piece. Like if you, if you want to do it and you need someone to like guide you through those limiting beliefs, like that's where we start in my program. And then we go through the steps of just planning the trip that you want. I can also like, I also offer separately, like to do it for you, we would have a conversation on what you are looking for. And then I can go ahead and do it. Cause not everyone loves the planning aspect, but I absolutely do. Yeah. <laughs> and even if I'm not going, I'm still happy to plan it. <laughs> <laughs> but for a long-term trip, the thing to remember is like, you cannot plan every single detail. It, if you're planning a trip that is going to last one year, the person planning this trip is not going to be the same person who is traveling in month eight. Things are going to happen along the way. You're going to grow and change as a person. And that's exciting. But mm -hmm. that's also the reason that you don't plan every single detail because, well, it's a waste of time. And yeah. you, you're planning for someone you don't even know at that point. So the way that I like to approach planning and budgeting and all of that good stuff is by working backwards and really just focusing on the essentials which is accommodation and food and transportation. And mm -hmm. so those are things you know you're going to have to spend money on. So we kind of look at the type of traveler you are. Like, where do you want to sleep? Do you want to sleep in hostel dorms? Or is that going to ruin your whole trip? Because it's way better to plan and spend more on private accommodation if that is who you are than to have a miserable night's sleep every night for a year just so that you can travel for a year. Yeah, yeah. And huh. so those, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's really cool. Um, you know, I think all those things are really important, especially for a longer, longer term trip. Um, you know, you might be able to get away with that on a, on a short trip of not planning out all those details or thinking about that. But, you know, if you're going to commit to six months, a year, whatever it is, you gotta, you gotta think through it a little bit. Absolutely. And for me traveling on my career break, so now I know I'm an introvert, but I did not know those terms back in 2015, 2016. And so I would find my, and I also, I'm like, I'm staying in hostel dorms. I want to keep this going as long as possible. And so I would find myself some days being like, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want anyone to even look at me. I just feel so like tired and I'm like in, 
Albania and it's awesome and I should be having fun, but I'm not having fun and I couldn't understand why. And it's the environment was like really draining for me and being in a room with a bunch of other loud people, like I wasn't able to kind of replenish my energy. And I just, I didn't know that about myself at the time. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that I like to help people think about beforehand so that you're not faced with that situation. So you can kind of plan it ahead. And so like now I do still stay in hostel dorms on occasion, but the majority of the time I am in a private accommodation so I can have that time to reset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's funny that you bring that up. I, I've learned that uh, the hard way as well. <laughs> Um, I, you know, hostels are great and they are very nice, uh, for the cost. Um, but I noticed the same thing. I was like, after a few days, I was like, all right, I need a break from all of this and all these people. I, I don't necessarily enjoy sleeping in the same room as 20 other people and, you know, not having any space to myself. Um, exactly. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's definitely changed my, my travel planning over the years, but, um, I want to go back really quick to um, you mentioned that it's it's hard to um, have people back home relate to you mm -hmm. when you travel, especially long term. Um, I know that's something I've I've definitely felt over over my years of traveling, and I noticed that it gets harder and harder to relate uh, to people that haven't traveled. The more that I do it, um, so I'm curious. Uh, you know, what's have you found a community of people that you know, that have done long-term travel and, and uh, I, I guess, tell me a little bit about that. Yes. And so it took me a long time to realize and accept it, but like, it's totally cool to make friends on the internet now. And that's what I do. That's where I've found a lot of people and who I can just talk to and relate to. And I have some good friends that I haven't ever met before. And it's nice to just find communities. And so like, there's a lot of Facebook groups that focus on certain travel related topics and you can connect with people that way. You can find people to meet up with on your travels. Um, for a while, Clubhouse was a big thing that I found community in and it was, it was nice to talk about these kinds of things and you can feel seen and heard and validated. But yeah, for me, like the internet is the place I would go to kind of have these conversations that are more difficult to have with people who haven't been where you've been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I think you have a, you have a Facebook group as well, don't you? Yes, I do. So What's... welcome there. It's for, it's called career breaks, remote work and other okay. travel possibilities. So you can just search it. You can search the travel shifters on Facebook if you want a group of like-minded people who like to travel. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, I, I know that's uh, in my in the book that uh, is hopefully coming out next uh, next month that I wrote. Um, that's one of the things I talk about is just the struggle of coming home. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, reverse culture shock can be a thing, um, and not having that community around you that understands, you know, I, I go on these life changing experiences around the world and then come home and, you know, nobody can really relate to it necessarily. And that's, I don't know, for me, that's, that's probably the, probably the hardest part of travel. I don't know if you agree with that. <laughs> yeah, it got, becomes a little uncomfortable because you've had these like life changing moments and you want to share them with the people you care about, but then it, it's like it almost feels like they don't care but it's not that yeah. it's just they can't relate so it, it's like this weird conundrum to sort of be part of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely uh that, that's the one thing i always tell people who are who are going on a trip is just just know that it's going to be like different when it come when you come back and if you want someone to talk to you about it reach out because i'll be happy to listen <laughs> <laughs> yes Exactly. Travel people are always willing to listen to each other and hear your cool mm -hmm. stories and see your photos and all of that good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. I love hearing people's stories because then I'm like, oh, I want to go do that now. Exactly. Which is the other problem. Like yeah. in, <laughs> the other problem with travel is you just keep adding things on. And like that's the other problem with long term travel and the problem with making too many steady plans because you learn things that you've never even heard of. And yeah. then if you have a rigid schedule, you can't fit them in. So 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So uh, now at this point, uh, you have the podcast, you got the Facebook group, you got your career break boot camp. I mean, what's what's kind of the vision moving forward? That is a great question. And so <laughs> I was literally just writing stuff down before we hopped on this call. But right now I'm focusing on like the career break and the remote work. I love how they work together because I think so many times when we're in a situation, especially at work, like in the situation I was in, I was feeling burnt out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I hate this so much. If I had made the decision to find another job, I would have literally accepted any job because I would have convinced myself it would have been better than the situation I was in. And Mm -hmm. when we do that, like we can very easily find ourselves in like the exact same situation, just at a different company. And nobody Mm -hmm. wants that. But the thing with the career break is you can separate yourself from your emotions. It gives you the time and space to kind of decompress, let your nervous system regulate, see the world, do something cool, care, like take care of yourself and not have responsibilities. And then you can get that clarity about what should be next. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes what is next is to keep traveling, but everyone needs to earn money at some point. And so that's kind of where the remote work comes in. Like if this travel lifestyle is for you, a great next step is to work remotely so you can keep it going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That makes so much sense to me. And honestly, uh, it's kind of funny that we're having this conversation right now because I'm literally going through that struggle right now. Um I, I was going through it earlier this year. I changed jobs. I'm realizing now that, you know what? I think maybe I do actually need to take that break and just take the leap. Yeah, um, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also scary because I'm like, you know what? I, you know, I need money. I still have bills I got to pay right now. And uh, I got to figure out that side of things as well. So it's just, I'm at that point where it's like, ah, oh, there's so much up in the air and I just need to need to move forward with something. Absolutely. And like, that's so relatable. And that's what happens with most people. It just, but then you start coming up with like reasons why it doesn't make sense and stuff like that. And Mm -hmm. those are all logistics. And those are all things that you're able to figure out. And like, once you can accept that you will find a solution to those air quotes problems, then you can kind of move forward. And there will always be another job. And like, there Mm -hmm. are always ways to solve those problems. So yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll we'll definitely have to talk more about that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it was was there anything else on your notes that you wanted to share? Um, no, that was like I was literally just like personally planning for the next year. So it was funny that you said that. <laughs> <laughs> um, perfect. Well, uh, I guess anything else on on your mind or that you want to share in terms of uh, career breaks and remote work? Um. <laughs> I will share one more thing when it comes to remote work. And like, this has been something that's been kind of on my mind all year long in terms of the whole digital nomad movement. But I think it's really important. Like if this is the route you take, remember why you want to travel in the first place and why you want to be a digital nomad. And there's a good chance it's not to go hang out with other digital nomads in a different country. Remember why you want to travel in the first place learn the culture, meet local people, do your part to like make the places you're visiting better wherever possible. And it's not really what travel can do for you, but like, what can we do for the destinations we visit? And so that is something that really weighs on me a lot when it comes to remote work and how popular it's becoming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think that's something really important to keep in mind, you know, where, especially when you're traveling around the world, I think it's good to, you know, be, be a good steward of the world, you know, represent, you know, where you're from well, and, and don't, you know, don't ruin the place that you're visiting. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> um, well, why don't we end it with this? Uh, Callie, talk about some maybe like a challenge, challenges that you faced uh, with this long-term travel and like one, one or two really awesome successes or, or really cool stories that you've had. Okay. So I think I've mentioned some of the challenges already and it like for me, one of the challenges when I first started out was really traveling in the same way that I approached my work life. It was like an Mm -hmm. achiever mentality. It was 
trying to prove myself. I'm like, how do you even prove yourself in the world of travel? Ridiculous. But I wanted everyone to know that I made the right decision to quit my job to travel. And so to show success in that, I'm like, I need to do as much as possible and do as many cool things as possible. And that is not why I travel and I couldn't see it at the time. So that was a challenge. I think you need to really have clarity and awareness about why you're doing what you're doing before you do it. And mm -hmm. I did not have that. But now that I do have that awareness, it's changed my whole life and the way I travel. And it's so much better and much more fruitful. And yeah. Then successes. <laughs> just, <laughs> I am just so enamored by Mexico. And I'm so happy that I've had the opportunity to spend like nearly two years in that country and explore slowly and on a deeper level. And it's just been one of my favorite travel experiences to get to know the culture, the food, the people, like recognize the differences on a state by state level to realize that there's so much nature and hiking and mountains and beauty in Mexico. And it's not just beaches and Cancun and Cabo and stuff like that. So, I mean, to me, that's a huge success. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, when people tell me they're going to Mexico, they're, they're usually going to the, you know, to those resorts, which is awesome. Uh, but to me, that's not so much traveling. That's more vacation. Um, exactly. Some of my favorite travels have been uh, actually in Mexico, but like touring around Tijuana and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and doing things like that versus sitting on the beach uh, drinking a cocktail. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I I don't go to Mexico for the beaches. Like, yeah, there's some beautiful beaches, but my favorite experiences have been away from the coast. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um Really quick, I guess, what, how many countries have you been to at this point and what's the next one for you? Okay. So it's, I don't have a number. It's, it's over 80. Um, and this is like the first time ever that I don't currently have any travel plans, which is so bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> and so I don't know. I know that I will be going back to Mexico at some point um, as I am a temporary resident there and also now that I'm in Massachusetts I've never been to Iceland and I'm like it's uh, kind of close so yeah, that yeah, might definitely. be on the horizon who knows <laughs> okay definitely yeah I just I just went to Iceland a couple months ago and oh amazing it's a ton of fun and especially on the east coast you're only a couple hours away yeah it's really not that far <laughs> <laughs> uh well very cool that uh that's exciting and and honestly like and just the short amount of time that I've been talking with you and checking out your podcast and blog and all of that. Um, it's been really inspiring and really, really cool to see, see all the possibilities are out there, which I think is what, what you're all about. So I, I love it and appreciate you sharing it with the world. Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, really quick. Where, where can people find you and, and your content? Um, you can find me on Instagram and TikTok at the travel shifters. And my website is travelshifters.com. Perfect. Yeah. I Like I said, it's great, easy to navigate. There's a lot of stuff on there, a lot of resources. So people should definitely go check it out. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, Callie, I, I appreciate the time. And uh, I look forward to seeing you somewhere around the world soon. Absolutely. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you. Bye. Hey everybody, Kyle here. If you enjoyed today's show and want more, you can always check out every episode on Spotify, Anchor, YouTube, and now Amazon Music as well. Just search for Our Travel Experiences on any of those platforms and it will pop up. You can also find everything all in one place on my website, OurTravelExp.com. And if you want to see my travel pictures as well as travel pictures from guests on the show, you can check them out on Instagram. The page is called Our Travel Experiences Podcast. And if you want to share your own pictures on the Instagram page or be a guest on the podcast, you can message me via that Instagram page or email me at OurTravelExperiences at Outlook.com. I would love to see your pictures and hear about your travel experiences. So 
please send them my way. And if that isn't enough for you, make sure to check out my weekly YouTube show from around the world Fridays. Every Friday, I'm taking five to 10 minutes to answer questions from listeners, share some souvenirs that I bought over the years, um, share my postcards over the years that I've accumulated, or share videos and pictures from one particular city or country that I visited, and so much more. So check it out, guys. You won't be disappointed. And uh, make sure you go subscribe to that as well. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you somewhere around the world soon.